Let's turn our Bibles to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 11. Matthew 11. Matthew 11, verse 28 through 30. Matthew 11, verse 28 through 30. Title of the message is, Are You Taking All Your Burdens to the Lord? Are You Taking All Your Burdens to the Lord? The Bible says, Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Brother Jay, can you pray for the message? We need you all the time. And we ask you that you'll be with each and every one of us, whatever concerns or needs or burdens that we might have. We ask you that you'll help us to be truthful with you and just take those burdens to you, Lord God, so that you can give us peace. Please fill Pastor Jay with your Holy Spirit. Love you in Jesus' name, pray. Amen. Amen. We sang a hymn called Burdens Are Lifted at Calvary. It was written by John Moore. He was a Scottish preacher and he came to Canada, Ontario, and he did his ministry there. While he was in Scotland, he wrote this hymn after meeting a young merchant who was critically ill. He, he went to, he got a call from sea merchants in a chapel and they said, okay, preacher, can you come talk to this young man? He's critically ill. And of course, he was looking at a you know, stack of tracks that he has. He's like, well, which one should I choose? And he saw one with the Pilgrim's Progress one. If you know Pilgrim's Progress, you know, there's a man with a heavy burden on his back. And he took that track and he went to the young man and he started sharing. You know, young man, I have burdens. I have burdens of guilt. I have burdens of sin in my life. But it was lifted at Calvary. And young man, you know, was listening intently. And the preacher asked him, you know, do you want your burdens to be lifted? And at that moment, you know, he trusted Christ and he got saved. And John Moore asked him, so how do you feel? And he said, my burdens are lifted. That's what he said. And then he, they, he, days went by and he just remembered and remembered and so he was a prolific hymn writer in the first place. And he started writing, and he started writing. And this hymn has been a blessing, and it has led a lot of folks to the Lord as well. We sang it, and it should remind you of the lyrics. It says, days are filled with sorrow and care. Hearts are lonely and drear. Isn't that true, especially true nowadays? Especially if you're not saved, 
you are going to be filled with a lot of sorrow and cares of this world. There's pandemic going on. You know, it's starting to go up again, cases. You know, things are closing down or you have to, you know, wear your mask again. You know, all these things are happening. Even with that, you have a financial situation to worry about. You have your, you know, family to worry about. And you also have every slew of other things to worry about. And what does that bring? It brings sorrow and care. Whether you're a millionaire, whether you're dirt poor, you're always going to have some kind of care. You always will be sorrowful of something. And a lot of times, if you don't have Lord Jesus Christ, your hearts are very, very lonely and drear because there's always something missing in your heart. That emptiness where you want to fill it with something. However, if you don't find it in Lord Jesus Christ, it's all for vain. It's like a vapor. You see it for a little bit, and then it just disappears. And as Christians, when you don't take all your burdens to the Lord, you'll be filled with sorrow and cares of this world. And you are going to start feeling lonely and drear. If you are not living a fruitful Christian life right now, it just shows that you're not taking your burdens to the Lord. And many times you don't take burdens to the Lord, your burdens to the Lord, because why? You're living in sin. When you're living in sin, it's hard to take your burdens to the Lord because you're not ready. You're not ready to give up. You're not ready to let it go. You're not ready to just leap from it once and for all. That's why many, many times so-called Christians look the most miserable person in the world. When you look around in the room, like so-called Christians have no joy, no happiness, no smile, and they're just, you know, grumpy. They're party poopers and they're wet blankets. Why is that? Why? Because you're not taking your burdens to the Lord. There's some burden in your life or burdens in your life that's really, 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 you know, putting you down. You know, you can't carry it anymore. You're just dragging on the ground. And spiritually speaking, look at yourself. Instead of someone who should be like jumping up and down, running for the Lord, you're just, you know, you're, 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 you're like a little baby. Or you're just crawling on the ground, little by little. And when there's an opportunity to do something for the Lord because of your burdens, you can't do anything. You can't move, you can't even go open the door, and you're just stuck there. And that's why you're stuck Christian. People who just sit around watching TV and doing nothing for the Lord because you don't take your burdens to the Lord. Imagine those people who's working out here. If you have to walk around with a hundred pounds, a hundred pound like barbell on your arms or on your back. How fast can you move? Maybe Brother Nathan could move as fast as the rest of you guys, you know, because he works out all the time. But for normal people, imagine if you're carrying a hundred pound backpack, right? Those military backpacks or, you know, a hiker's backpack where it's huge. And then you put all the weights in there and it's like 100, 150. 200 pounds, and you have to carry it. Just imagining it, you know, you start sweating for some of you. Imagine you have to carry that backpack out in the desert, out in the sun, over there in the Death Valley, you know, hottest place, 50 degrees. Remember, you're just carrying it. How far do you think you go? You don't go too far. And you'll be filled with sorrow and care. I can't breathe, you know, I'm so thirsty. All these things are just putting me down. This heat is just compressed about me. I could barely breathe. And for some Christians, that has become your normal day-to-day Christian walk. And that shouldn't be as a Christian. As a Bible believer, 
Why would you live a life so burdened with cares of this world, burdened with all your sins, burdened with all your troubles, and burdened with just your selfish pride and your care for yourself only? As Christians, you should be living free, right? Truth shall set you free. And when you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you became free. You became free from sin, right? You became free from the world, your flesh, from the, all the things that were, you know, bound, bound, you were bounded by. However, sadly, majority of the Christians go back to those same burdens. Thank God that you're saved during this church age. Because once you're saved, you're saved forever. Man, your sins are gone once and for all. You know, my sins are gone. You know, through the precious blood of Jesus Christ, it's washed away. And through spiritual circumcision, you don't have to worry about it. you ever burning in hell. You know, your body and soul separated forever. So that's one thing for sure. That burden of burning in hell, you don't have to worry about if you're saved. Praise the Lord for that. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's the biggest burden a human being could ever have. Thinking, okay, I have a burden of burning in hell. But you don't have to worry about that. That alone, if you are you know, engulfed with that thought and being thankful about it, you know, some of the burdens of the world, it's not as big to you anymore. My biggest burden, my eternity, question of where I'm going after I die has been solved once and for all because I trust that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior and I won't have to go to hell no matter what. Even if I want it, I can't go anymore. All right? uh, that's the that's fun part where when you talk to someone. They're like, what? What did you just say? Even if you wanted to go, you can't go anymore. You can't. Because all your sins are washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ once and for all. And your body is so separated once and for all. So everything that your body is doing is your body is doing. Your soul can't do it anymore. And that's why I could confidently tell you why there's snow. I'm white as snow. Right? My physical skin might not be, but soul is why does no? There's no blemish. And everybody here who trusted Christ, same thing. That burden you should never worry about. You know, it's sad to hear many, many Christians who still has that burden. I don't know where I'm going after I die. I'm still burdened by, you know, thinking one day if the Lord were to come back, you know, if the trumpet calls that I'll be still stuck here, you know, when everybody goes up. You don't have to. That burden was taken away once and for all by Lord Jesus Christ. If you trust Lord Jesus Christ, if you put your faith in Lord Jesus Christ once and for all, then that's it. You don't have to worry about it. And the Word of God will not lie about it. So that burdens are lifted for those who trust that Christ as their Lord and Savior. However, after you got saved, you still have so many burdens that's going on in your life. That burden, that burden, burden. If you could truly say that I have no care and sorrow right now, you know, God bless you, right? God really bless you. You, you are really close to God. You know, you're living a, as close to a sinless life as possible. I guarantee you have a close relationship with the Lord. You have a loving family. You do Bible study together. You read your Bible together. You know, you pray together, right? You know, those, if you do that, hey, you know, you're really, really enjoying your Christian life. But for many, that's not what's happening in your life. You're filled with things of the world. You're worrying about school. You're worrying about work. You're worrying about relationship. You're worrying about what other people are thinking. You're worrying about food. You're worrying about, you know, oh, housing, cars. You're worrying about every little thing out there, including your health problems, you know, inevitable. All these burdens are just coming after, coming at you. And when things start going downhill, it tends to happen all at once. 
Wouldn't you agree? Right? When things don't go your way or things are not you know, working out, it seems like everything doesn't work out. It seems like the, all of the wheels are just falling off. It's not just the one wheel on the front, rear. It's the, all of the weir, uh, wheels, like back, front, side, everywhere. When those things do happen, what do you do? That is the question. I mean, what do you do when you have all those burdens that come your way? Do you go to the Lord? I mean, such a simple answer, right? We discuss about what a friend we have in Jesus. The author who lost, you know, a couple of the fiancés, right? Future loved ones, spouses to be, lost them. But he wrote that hymn. Sounds so simple. However, very few actually does it. Why is it that, as a human beings, you always have to go through trials and hardships? You actually have to, you know, reap your rewards of sin before you wake up. It shouldn't be like that, but it seems like that's, that's a pattern. That's a pattern that's what, what's happening in your life. Deep inside, because you have Lord Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you have the Holy Ghost, and you have that convicting you know, spirit in you, and you know that you shouldn't go that route, and you shouldn't behave that way, but you still do it. And you start justifying. This happened because this happened. How many times do you do things because after something happened, another event happened, right? People are like, oh, yeah, I got fired from the job, so I'm going to start drinking. I have fight, you know, with my spouse, so I'm going to start going smoking. You know, I just broke up, so I'm going to start doing drugs. You know, you know what? Now I'm financially ruined, so I'm just going to go start gambling. Right? People do things after certain things happen because to them and to you, because that burden start getting bigger and bigger to you. That's how many times, you know, even Christian families go through a lot of hard times and splits, you know, because of financial situations. It's never easy to go through a financial hardship. It's never easy when you're worrying about you know, how to eat tomorrow, where to sleep. If you haven't gone through that, you wouldn't know. So don't say, I understand, and start trying to you know, comfort another person if you haven't gone through it, because you just don't know. You, you just become, you, know, you look like haughty. You look just proud. However, for those who actually went through it, they know. And you know if you've gone through those hardships, how difficult it is, how hard it is to lift off that burden of financial hardships. That's where Christian, strong Christian men and women start fighting. They start fighting because they start worrying, because they need that next dollar, because they need that food. As a human being, I completely understand. But as a Christian, you should be taking all of those burdens to the Lord right away. I mean, right away. Yes. I mean, if you have any friction in the family because of you know, financial reasons, you have to go to the Lord right away. And it's not about just families. It's about single people, anybody. If you are going through some kind of you know, financial burden, you cannot try to just resolve it by doing something that's not right. right. Are you going to compromise your Christian ways and you're going to compromise your testimony because of financial hardships? Let's see what the Bible says. Turn your Bibles to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. There are some burdens in your life that you just have to take it to the Lord, and it needs to be lifted off today. It needs to be lifted up of your back, like today, so that you will actually have a better and fruitful Christian life. Because some of you 
are just no good Christian, just stuck on your couch and doing nothing for the Lord because you're so burdened. You're so burdened by everything in your life, and especially financial stuff. Let's look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. The Bible says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That's not what I said. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says what? My God shall supply all your need, not your wants, but all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That's what God says. Then why would you worry about your financial situation? Guarantee, of course, if you're not doing your best, right? And if you're just out there, you know, using your money unwisely, of course, you reap what you sow. However, if you're doing the right things, if you're doing the best, however, those things are happening, but the doors hasn't opened, doors aren't opening, you should not be discouraged. And you shouldn't be going down the hills of sin that caused you to stray away from the Lord in the past. The same path you shouldn't go down because something does not work. Because Lord said he will supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Lord promised he's going to take care of you. Then why would you worry about it? Are you worrying? Or are you so burdened? Because of people around you? You know, the worst devils in your life many times are the people surrounding you, your close ones. Why? Because they start putting things in your ears. They're like, oh yeah, you know, your husband should be better. Your wife should be better. Right? Why doesn't he make more money? Why doesn't she make more money, right? Who gets glory out of it? Does that really help you, listening to those things? Are some of you enjoying those type of gossips where it's hurting you, your family, and everybody around you? We're like, oh, yeah. And my my husband doesn't make as much money as the other husband. Which husband want to hear that? My wife, you know, she doesn't work like she should. Who, what wife wants to hear that? I mean, however, if you start listening to those things, and if you start talking like things, you're doing the work of the devil. You're trying to split the family. You're trying to get that burden, get on that person so much that there won't be a harmonious, happy you know, Christian marriage life. And then what does that happen? It has a, you know, rolling effect. It goes down to the children. And children are burdened too. And that's where children start compromising. We had a lot of good Christian children who turned out to be not so good Christian adult. Why? Because they start letting those burdens get to them. Instead of going to the Lord, taking all your burdens to the Lord, Especially with the financial stuff, instead, they're like, okay, I'm poor. I don't have money. I need money. I'm going to work a lot, miss church. I'm going to compromise my ways. I'm going to sell things, do things. I'm going to go to things that I would never thought of going to, but because of mighty dollar. And then what happens? You don't see them no more. Even if they're here, They're not the same anymore. Why? Because they let their financial burden ruin their Christian walk with God. They let their financial burden ruin his relationship, her relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And they let the financial burden ruin everything in their life. Why do you think that people who are hounded by money, people who love money, which is the root of all evil, The love of money, we need money to survive, but the love of money will only bring sin and evil in your life. Why does that happen? Why? Because it opens different eyes. It opens different realm in your life where you you give a kid cookie that he's not supposed to eat, right? You know, mommies, you tell your kids, don't touch that cookie. 
Right? You don't have to tell, you know, Sarai, but for all the other kids, don't touch that cookie, right? Don't touch it. But the kid, with his human nature, eats that cookie, chocolate chip cookie, tastes so good. You know, it's, it's, it's got like 500 calories per piece, you know, it's just eating, eating, right? And it becomes sugar high, runs up and down, and just crashes. And now, this kid knows that feeling, that sugar high, right? And when things are down, when the kid has grown a little bit, man, I have to do all these chores. You know, my life is super hard. I have to do multiplication table, you know, I've got the division table, I'm, I'm, I'm going through a hard time. And then this kid goes to the cookie jar. And then now he's gotten smarter. Even though it's on top of the refrigerator, he brings the chair. And this, mind you, this kid is only like five years old. Brings the chair, goes up, takes it out, and makes it look fuller, right? It's the cookies and they make it stand up, you know looking like nothing happened. But mommy knows just by looking at it. Mommy lets it go. OK, he must have been really hungry. But it's happening over and over. And suddenly, the jar has only like two left. And the mommy has to deal with it. And the kid goes, ah, mommy, I've, I'm just stressed out as a five-year-old, you know? <laughs> I have so many things to do in life. I have to play games. I have to listen to you and dad. I have to you know, take care of my siblings. And I, I get so down, so I need to eat. And mommy goes, man, you know how much you weigh now? You weigh 150 pounds. <laughs> and you're five. So at that time, he didn't know. He was just only enjoying that sugar high. What's happening with you is that with all those burdens of financial hardship, you want to grab it from wrong sources. You want to grab it from the wrong people. You, got, you want to grab it the wrong way. You know, God wants diligent, honest living. That's what God wants. God doesn't want quick, rich stuff. I mean, that's, 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 not, that's what the Bible says. Right. You have to work hard. However, you have to work hard within the period where you wouldn't compromise your relationship with Lord Jesus Christ. It wouldn't compromise with the church ministry. And just like that kid who's having high with that cookie, instead of you thinking about what's happening to you, you start grabbing it. You start eating it without knowing all these bad things happening in your life. And when God lets you know about it, Man, you're already 150 pounds. Do you know how long it's going to take for a five-year-old child to lose maybe 100 pounds to get to his normal weight? It's going to take months, if not years. That's what happens to you. If you do not take your burdens to the Lord and then get that burden out of the way, you're going to start accumulating more and more burdens to the point where it's going to take you months and years to recover. It's going to take years and years for you to get rid of that burden. For some who's listening, it's happening to you right now. Because of your financial situation, I don't envy you. Nobody envies anybody who's going to financial hardship. But because of it, you started compromising. You started justifying. You started taking actions that you know you shouldn't. And it's against the word of God. You're sinning against the holy temple. But you do it thinking that it's for the better. You're deceived by the devil. You have to wake up. You have to confess your sins and get right with the Lord. Take the burden to the Lord. When you take your burden to the Lord and bring your financial hardships to the Lord, you know what happens? You feel free. Who's going to take care of you better than God himself. I mean, is your mommy? Oh, man, bless her soul. We love our moms, right? They want what's best for us. But can they provide what God can provide? No. Your daddy? 
your husband, your wife, your children. You shouldn't be relying on human beings to take off your burdens. You should always trust and go to the Lord for every one of your burdens. When you go to the Lord, He's going to give you peace. You got to be free. Like, you know what, Lord? I messed up. Everybody messes up, right? Including you. So I messed up, Lord. And I'm in a bind. You know, this burden is really heavily down on me. You know, it's like kind of, you know, it's, it's brought certain friction in my marriage or in my family life that hasn't shown up in the past. But I don't want this burden. I don't want to carry it by myself. I don't want to carry it at all. Lord, I bring it to you. I want you to take this burden away from me. Once you truly bring all your heart to the Lord and bring those burdens to the Lord, you know what's going to happen? The Lord's going to take it away. I mean, there's a certain peace. There's certain, you know, joy that you know for those who have gone to the Lord with all your burdens, especially your financial burdens to him, that, you know what? I'm going to do my best and rest this history because the Lord's taking care of everything else. He said, I'm going to have my need. I don't need my mansions. I don't need my, you know, Bugatti or Rolls Royce or Bentley. I just need something that will help me go A to B and serve the Lord. Many times your burdens come because of your covetousness, right? Because you want more. You want more instead of what you need. Why aren't you happy with what you have? Why aren't you happy with just, you know, what the Lord has provided you? Why do you have to listen to others? And why do you have to listen to, you know, those people who's trying to start stuff in your family? They're not your friends. Even if they're Christians, they're not your friends. If they're trying to instigate and ruin your family with gossip and all those things. If those people come, come your way, just tell them, man, you know what? I don't want to deal with you because you're, you're like a sore, eyesore to me. Whether they're, they're not really your friends, if they're there to, you know, you, including yourself, if you talk to people to just talk about financial stuff, you have to really, really, you know, be wary of those people. All they talk about is financial stuff, right? You know, you have to be wary of those people. What's their focus? Their focus is on material things and of the world. And just like people who want to share things in social media, many times they want to do it. Why? They want to show off. Or should I say 100 times, right? They just want to show off. I mean, oh, I have this, I have that, but you don't have that. So give me, you know, star. I have this, I have that. You don't have that, so I'm better than you. I mean, why do you want to be in that same mindset, especially if you are a so-called Christian? Why are you, like, worse than those people out there, you know, who's, who's not swayed by those things? Don't listen to what people have to say. Listen to what God has to say. Always, your final authority should be the Word of God. Did the word of God say that you're going to have mansion here on earth? No, you're going to have mansion up in heaven. If someone comes to you, mm, you don't have mansions. Exactly. But no. You start, going to your, you start going to your husband and you start going to your wife. Where's the dough? Where can we get this? Let's have a trip to Las Vegas, right? Or, you know... Morongo or Pala or, you know, all those places, right? You, you'll be surprised how many people go there as a Christian. Or they're like, you know what, honey, let's take our cares away. Let's get rid of our burdens. Bring out that wine. Bring out that beer. You know, like Koreans, right? Bring out that soju. And they're like, okay, let's get rid of our burdens once and for all. You're, you're adding up more burdens, more burdens, more burdens. Sin will never take away your burdens. 
Just remember that. Any sin, right, whether it's big or small in your eyes, any sin will never take your burdens away. That's why before anything, you go to the Lord. Just go to the Lord. And especially, not only the financial stuff, you know, your sin problems, and especially your health issues, you just have to go to the Lord. You have to. You know, I know a little bit of the pain that people go through because my wife has been going through it, but I can't say it because, you know, it's just foolish for me to say if I haven't gone through it. But I know some, especially members here and especially people listening, you're going through some terrible, terrible, you know, you know I mean, health ailments, right? You're going through sickness, you're going through illness, disease, anything. You, all I could say is that you have to take that burden to the Lord. Amen. However hard it is, you, know, you have to take it to the Lord. You have to leave it at the Lord's hands, and you got to be let it be. Lord will give you peace, and Lord will give you strength. And that's guaranteed. That's what Bible says. Let's look at another verse. 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. You know why you can do this? Because you know someone who cares for you. When you take your care upon him, he's going to take care of it. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. Let's start with verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt, exalt you in due time. Verse 7, casting all your care upon him. Are you doing that right now? Are you casting all your care, all your burdens? Are you taking it to him? Whether it's health issues, whether it's financial issues, whether it's relationship issues, it's work, education, everything. Are you casting all your care upon him? Because the Bible says, for he careth for you. That word care, it's not just me looking at you. It's not me just looking at Brother Bogey. That's not a care. Care is actually action. No? Put into action. Think about it. Lord careth for you. Why would you be burdened so much with everything going on in your life when you know that Lord's taking care of everything? It's time for you to wake up. It's time for you to take everything. It's not about just, you know, praying to God about, oh, Lord, I'm praying for right, salvation of the souls, right? Ministry, very important. Not just generic stuff you only take to the Lord. You really have to take to the Lord. Very, 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 very granular, little stuff. Everything in your life, right? From A to Z. Everything, you have to take it to the Lord. Everything. I mean, did I say everything? You have to take everything to the Lord. Because if you don't take everything to the Lord, that one thing, two things, three things that you didn't take it to the Lord, that's going to become that burden that stops you from being that fruitful Christian, joyful Christian, someone that God could use. You have to take all your burdens to the Lord. And when you do, you will have that conviction, you will have that assurance, you will have that joy, you will have that happiness. You could actually smile for a change. You could actually have peace for a change where my burdens are lifted at Calvary. My burdens are completely lifted at Lord's hands. Think about that. Man, when I think about that, it just gives me a smile, right? Praise wow. Man, my burdens is in the hands of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. My burdens, Lord's taking care of it because I let it, and I give it, and I want Lord to take care of everything. Then, think about it. Tomorrow, I don't worry about it. Tomorrow, day after, no. I do my best for the Lord. 
And just like the Bible says, he's going to take care of me. He's going to provide all my need. He might not provide my wants, which is my fault, which is your fault, but he's going to provide all my needs. And I'm going to be thankful for it, and I'm going to be going to the Lord for every single burden. It's up to you to make that decision today. Have you been running away from the Lord? Have you been avoiding the Lord? Because your burdens are too heavy. Because you didn't want to show your, share your burden to the Lord. It's time for you to take all your burdens. Financial, physical, you know, health reasons, relationship reasons, job, education, you name it. You have to take every burden to the Lord because he cares for you. He's going to take care of it for you. Who better than Almighty God to take care of all your burdens? Every eye closed, every head bowed. For many, your burdens were lifted at Calvary when it comes to sin and all your guilt. For those who are not sure where you're going after you die, you still have burdens about sin and guilt. You don't know how to get saved from eternal lake of fire in hell, then this is time. Just like that young merchant that John Moore witnessed to, it's time for you to get your burdens lifted at Calvary. The Bible says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. Do you know that you are a sinner on your way to hell? The Bible says, but the fearful and unbelieving and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Because you're born as a sinner, you're on your way to hell. But the Bible says, but God commended his love toward us in that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus Christ died for all your sins on the cross, shedding his precious blood. All you have to do is trust him as your Lord and Savior. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. With repenting heart, knowing that you are a sinner on your way to hell, you turn from your ways. You turn from your ways and you turn to the Lord. With that, the Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God is raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Is your burden lifted at Calvary? If not, wherever you are in this prayer, Trust Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and get saved from hell. Dear God, I am a sinner. Please forgive all my sins. I believe Jesus is God. I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for all my sins, shedding his precious blood. Right now, with all my heart, I receive Jesus Christ into my heart as my personal Savior And Lord, I only trust precious blood of Jesus Christ to wash away all my sins. Thank you, Lord, for dying for all my sins and coming into my heart as my Savior and Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you pray with all of your heart right now, realizing that you are a sinner on your way to hell, believing that Jesus died for your sins, and accept him in your heart as your Lord and Savior, the Bible says you have eternal life. Bible says, but as many as received him, Jesus Christ, to them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Your sins washed away once and for all. You'll never have to worry about burning in hell. You'll one day go to heaven because you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And for the rest of the people, you know, you know who you are, right? You know you have all the burdens in your life and you never took it to the Lord. You were always keeping it, and you're trying to resolve it on your own, thinking that you could do it, but you can never do it on your own. Especially when you're saved, especially Christ in you, the victory, you have to take it to the Lord. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for taking our burdens away at Calvary. However, Lord God, we're filled with our everyday burdens, Lord. And many times we don't take it to you, we try to resolve it on our own with others, and we start compromising and we start sinning. Heavenly Father, 
help us to just confess our sins and get back to you. And Lord God, help us to just bring all of our burdens to you from littlest things to the biggest things because you can solve it, Lord, not me, not anyone else. Help us to just trust you more and help us to live a life burden-free, just being joyful with happiness, with smile, being a good testimony to our family, our husbands and wives and everyone else because we have taken all of our burdens to you. Please be with especially Pastor Shrive and those who are not doing well physically, Lord, please heal them as soon as possible. And I pray that throughout this pandemic, let your grace and mercy be upon us. And above all, Lord, even so come Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone.